Hello, hello. How's it going, Andrea? Going pretty well. How are you? Super good. Um, welcome back to Chicago Roboto. Um, I hope you've been enjoying the conference so far. We only have a few talks left um, and uh, uh, maybe some other last minute things. Uh, we do have, uh, I know we've been posting some pictures of Chicago Roboto t-shirts. We do have t-shirts for this year. Um, I posted a quick link on the attendees channel, so please be sure to uh, check those out. Um, and of course, as usual, if you have any questions, please head over to the day three Andrea Falcone chat and uh, you know, be sure to prepend those questions. Um, so it's a lot easier for me to see. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, yeah, without further ado, uh, Andrea Falcone will be talking about becoming an AOSP contributor. Um, please take it away, Andrea. Thank you so much. Hey everybody, I'm super excited to be here. I'm coming to you live from my basement in Massachusetts. And um, one of my favorite things about going to conferences is traveling and getting to see new places. Um, I've seen a lot of my basement and I've added some beautiful decor. Um, so I hope you all have jazzed up your spaces um, and are ready to learn how to become a, an AOSP contributor in the next 30 minutes. So uh, my name is Andrea Falcone, uh, I've mentioned. I'm a software engineer at Google. I work on the Jetpack team. Um, so you're probably all familiar um, with Android Jetpack and the libraries, um, but I specific specifically work on the infrastructure and the tooling side of things. Before working on Jetpack, um, I worked on some other familiar developer tools like Crashlytics, Fastlane, and Firebase. So what even is AOSP and why would you or anyone want to contribute to it? AOSP is the open Android open source project, and that refers to the people, the processes, the source code, all the things that make up Android. We oversee the project and develop the source code, as well as manage the tools and the procedures that we develop that we use to develop the software. Contributing to AOSP means improving the Android ecosystem which is why many of us are here today at this conference to learn about the Android ecosystem and to work to improve it. AOSP includes some of the Android uh, code for the Android platform, for the Android operating system, Android Studio, Gradle plugins, and of course, the Jetpack libraries. I'm gonna talk a lot about Jetpack today, so we should familiarize ourselves with it just a bit. Jetpack comprises the Android X package libraries, which are explicitly unbundled from the platform APIs to help developers write high quality apps easier. And it offers backwards compatibility. And it's updated more frequently than the Android platform, approximately every two weeks for doing library releases. Jetpack is a great place for external contributors to start. It's easier to get started with because the tooling is more familiar for app developers and the footprint is smaller. Jetpack uses Gradle and Kotlin to build so these are probably pretty familiar for you as app developers. I'm gonna focus on making Jetpack contributions during this talk. Many of the principles that I'm going to cover do talk about, or uh, do, do apply to uh, Android platform changes though. Speaking of Gradle and Kotlin, this is a Gradle plugin built in Kotlin. If you're not writing your Gradle scripts or plugins in Kotlin, I highly recommend it. So contributing to open source, can mean so many different things. And I'll show you a few different ways that you can play a significant part in AOSP. The process of contributing to AOSP is the following. First, you need to find a bug to fix. Even if you're going to implement a new feature, you have to file a bug for it. Then you need to get access to the tools and to the source code. Then you'll make test and upload that code change. I'll walk through these steps in more detail, but before I get there, let's talk about contributing in a different way. Before we even think about contributing code, let's consider contributing bug reports. All bugs, issues, and feature requests are filed in the tool called Issue Tracker. You can use Issue Tracker to find specific bugs to fix. For Jetpack, we have a bug bounty list. These are bugs that we want 
external contributors or even internal contributors to go ahead and fix. They're supported. You can also use Issue Tracker to find known issues. And if you can't find what you're looking for, you can use it to file a great bug. I mentioned the Android X bug bounty. Now, this is a hot list of issues that would really love help fixing. We're working to add more public bugs to this list every day. So this hot list contains feature requests and bugs that we think that anyone could handle with some help and support from folks on our side. Bug bounties must have a sponsor to provide some background context to do the code review and give you educational resources um, so you can understand and resolve the issue. You can find known issues for given components from the docs page on reporting bugs. And there's a link at the bottom of the slide. Starring issues in Issue Tracker allows you to demonstrate that this issue is impacting you. This is a great way to contribute. Teams use the number of stars to understand how important an issue is to their audience and which bugs should actually be addressed. Filing an accurate bug report is incredibly important. The more details that are available, the better. You can search for the particular component that you want to file the bug against, and this might be a library or a feature. Each component or library can have a different template with fields that are relevant to it. Please take the time to fill out those questions and provide a sample project if at all possible. This shows that you're really serious about the bug that you've spent some time on it, which will allow Googlers to also spend time reproducing and trying to fix it. When you're filing a bug, you can look at the recent issues to see if someone else has already filed a similar bug. If so, starring their issue and leaving a comment with additional details is better than filing a new one. Your biggest contribution to Android might be filing the best bugs, and that's okay. If you leave here today and don't ever write a line of code in Android, you'll still have really made a huge contribution by filing those great bugs. So I'm going to talk specifically about contributing to Jetpack. Contributing to Android platform is possible using most of the same tools, but Jetpack is definitely more accessible to most Android devs, and it's what I work on every day. So how do we code? Referring back to our process, we need to download the code. Before we can download the code, we must download a tool called Repo, which downloads the code. So Repo is a tool that unifies Git repositories when necessary, and performs uploads to the Garrett revision control system, and automates part of the Android development workflow. It isn't meant to replace Git, only to make it easier to work with Git in the context of an Android project. In most situations, you can use Git instead of repo or mix the commands to form more complex commands. You might see files called a repo manifest. This file tells repo exactly what to bring into the project. Here, we're downloading all of our dependencies, primarily relying on binaries or pre-builds so that we can create a consistent build across any machine. This list looks kind of scary, but really it's just other Git projects that Android X depends on. Unless you're adding additional dependencies, you can pretend you never saw this. So we first have to get repo. It isn't very elegant, but you can download it by curling this URL and putting the executable in your path. Then to use repo, you run repo init to get set up. This gets the latest version of repo with the most recent bug fixes. You must specify a URL for the manifest which is the file I just mentioned, and that dict dictates where the various repositories including, included in the Android source are placed within your working directory. Basically, repo init tells repo which code to download. To download the Android source tree into your working directory, you run repo sync. The initial sync operation can take an hour or more to complete because it's a lot. Repo start will create a new branch for you to begin working on. And then you do a lot of, do, do the hard work. Um, I make it seem simple in this timeline, but the hard work is in here. Um, 
In repo upload, we'll then run some pre-commit hooks and upload your changes to Garrett. So now that we've downloaded the tool that downloads the code and configured that tool, we can download the code. Repo sync is that command. Um, depending on which repo and branch you're downloading, this can take quite a while and use up a lot of disk space. Because of the manifest that I described earlier, each branch is configured with different dependencies. And that's why the Android X master dev checkout uh, is much smaller than the Android platform checkout. Curious what repo sync actually does? Under the hood, repo sync is updating to the, to the remote and rebasing your changes on top of it. And repo sync can be sped up by allowing it to run on more threads. This is super helpful for, for the first time that you download code. Most of the Android platform and Jetpack development happens in the platform repo, but on different branches. When you initialize the repo, you pass a branch parameter to tell it which manifest to use when downloading the dependencies. All right, after the code is downloaded, you can use repo start to make a new change. Repo start makes a new branch for your changes and switches you over to that branch. So at this point, you have the code and you're ready to explore or make code changes. And you should do this using Android Studio. Jetpack development prescribes a very specific version of Studio that works best with the current code. This version should be the latest and stable. The command to use this version is Gradle W Studio. It will download Android Studio every time that it runs so that you're up to date, even if you already have that version. The first time that you run it, um, making sure that you, you've got the right thing. Um, but it'll also keep you up to date um, so that when you're doing Jetpack development, you've always got a compatible version. Jetpack uses Gradle to build, so you'll probably notice some similarities around assemble and test from your own app. We also have a number of custom tasks which are added by the Android X plugin. Build on server is the main one, which does everything. If you're using anything other than a machine with 24 cores and 192 gigs of RAM, you'll soon notice that this takes a while, up to 60 minutes even. It's important to run build on server before actually committing, because you'll typically find your defects here, but run it, grab a snack, maybe a nap, decorate your space. Um, it's doing a lot of hard work, but we acknowledge that it takes a while. So if build on server takes an hour, is that the only way? No, uh, there's a per project build, which is much faster than running tasks on the root project. For example, if you're gonna make a change in view pager two, you can primarily build and test that project. And it's also very easy to run tests directly from Studio. The Jetpack repo comes with a number of sample apps which exercise the libraries. And this is a great test bed for your changes that you might make. It's also possible to test the changes that you're making in your own app, which is important because it's a real world example and you're probably fixing a bug that has impacted you. To create the archive, which contains a Maven repo of all the artifacts, you should run create Ar archive. Then you can modify your app to point to the Maven repo that you just created. It lives under Android X build repo support. You can change your build.gradle dependencies to depend on the latest version of the library that was built. So build it, create the archive, point your app to it, and test it. The code is done. We just ship it, right? Maybe. Unfortunately, it's not so fast. Before you can upload to Garrett, you need to establish a password that will identify you to the server. Luckily, you only have to do this once. You also need to sign the CLA, the Contributor License Agreement for Android. It's a few steps, keep going. All right, finally done, we're set up. Are we ready to ship it? Let's try. So using git commands, I checked to see the code that I've changed. I find a file and I add it and commit it with a message. And then I use repo upload to upload that change. When you run repo upload, you'll be asked if you want to run the script hooks. You must always run them. 
The scripts have essential functions such as adding identifiers to commits. Uploading code without the hooks will not work. Unfortunately, my attempt to upload failed here. When I use repo to upload, the hooks run and see that I haven't added this test stanza to my commit message. So I can amend my commit to add a line saying what or how I tested. Committing with amend is super important. Amending keeps this change ID field that the commit message, um, that, that the tools added to the commit message. And this is how Garrett keeps track of the patches that you're uploading. Remote branches are not part of the Garrett workflow. You should be working from a single local commit. So you continue to amend it and push those changes. You'll notice that the commit message was modified and this change ID field was added. It must remain in the last paragraph of the commit message. It's pretty common to have started coding and committing without having done repo start first. The tool will complain if you try to upload and you haven't done repo start, but it isn't too hard to get out of the situation. You run repo start, which creates a new branch, but your change isn't there. But then you can grab your change from the ref log and merge it into the new branch that repo started for you. Now your commit is at the tip of tree and you can use repo upload to continue. Okay, back to uploading the code. After I amend to add the test stanza, the repo upload failed again. The pre-commit hook also included a variety of check style uh, rules. And these rules are codified so that we don't have to enforce them all during code review. In this case, I screw up the trailing white spaces. Lint will automatically correct many of these issues or you can fix them yourself. All right, once I fix my check style issues, I can successfully upload the change list. You have multiple branches in progress. You'll be, able to, you'll be asked to select which one you want to upload. And repo gives you the link to the CL right there. Let's take a quick pause to talk about some vocabulary. Change list is what you might otherwise know as a pull request. It's also called a change request or a CR. It's a change or a group of changes to review. A patch set is a version of a change. When you amend your commit for uploading, it makes a new patch set. Pull requests in tools like GitHub are made up of one or more distinct commits, which are either squashed or merged individually. With Garrett, the patch set is squashed when the CL is merged. That's a lot. I know the barrier to entry is high with these tools, but I got a few things to show off that I believe will allow more developers to contribute. So we just walked through a pretty lengthy process. If you're gonna be making substantial functional changes, that really is the standard process. However, we've recently introduced a much simpler flow that uses a web editor to make changes, and I'm going to show this off. So we introduced Android Code Search, which is at cs.android.com, which allows you to search and view Android platform and Jetpack code very easily. Searching is fast, and you can find files and text within a file based on your search criteria and you have the ability to show Git history and blame as well. Something that's currently missing is linking to other classes or types and navigating the code in Android Studio is still better in that regard. From Android Studio or from Android Code Search, you'll see a new button that says edit mode. When you click on that, you'll be taken to the Git source editor. From the source editor, you can browse the code and make changes. You can see the diff of what you've changed. Let's take a look at what it looks like to make a simple change using code search and Git source editor. After clicking edit code, you can modify the code. You can make modifications in multiple files and include them in the change. When you click on create change, you're given a description box. This is your commit message, so be detailed and include the bug you're fixing. After you submit the change, you're going to be taken to Garrett to start the code review process. There's the link to the CL right there at the top. And there's Garrett. So 
that was easier. Let's take a look at Garrett. Garrett is a web-based tool used for reviewing code. Regardless of how you've created the change via repo or the Git source editor, you'll need to use Garrett to have your code reviewed and submitted. Because AOSP houses many different projects and repositories, you'll see a lot of changes in Garrett, also known as Android, Android Review. You can see the repo and branch that the changes were made on. For Jetpack, this is Framework Support Android X Master Dev. To the right of all of that is an array of acronyms. Each of these is the status of a prerequisite for each change. Different projects have different requirements. There's typically some combination of code review, manual verification, open source license checks, and pre-submit testing. When you click on the change, you can view the details, which include the prerequisites or labels. You'll see things to find reviewers, find owners, and to see if your change is ready via pre-submit. Let's talk about commit messages. Good commit messages explain the bug that you're fixing. Ideally, any discussion on whether something is a bug or is worth fixing should happen in the issue tracker instead of in the CL. Provide a detailed description of the change in your commit message. This description will be pushed to the public AOSP repository, so follow our guidelines for writing changeless descriptions. One line summary followed by a blank line, and this is the format is used by Git and Garrett for various displays. Starting on the third line, enter a longer description. This description should focus on what issues the change solves and how it solves it. Include a brief note of any assumptions or background information that might be important to another contributor when they're working on this feature next year. Seals need to be assigned to someone so that it will get reviewed. If you picked up a bounty bug, you should be able to assign the CL to the bug sponsor for review. Otherwise, you can use the Find Owners button in Garrett to select one or two people to review the CL. Please don't assign more than two. If they aren't the right people, they'll make sure that it gets to the right ones. Reviewers will indicate that your change is ready for pre-submit testing, review the code, and eventually submit the code change for you. We have internal guidelines that help us keep up with reviews that come in. It will be a good problem to have if we have more contributors and contributions than we can review. In Garrett, you should resolve all comments by making the requested changes and marking them done or responding with answers. After you've addressed the comments individually, you'll hit the blue reply button at the top to make the change. This will send all of the draft comments through. When someone's reviewing your change, they may have many comments. You can easily lose track of them in the UI because it's just a running log uh, click on the comments tab to reveal the comments and you can filter down to those that are not resolved or those that have drafts so you can clean everything up before the CL is ready to submit. When the grayed out submit button appears, you'll know that you will have made it. Unfortunately, you don't have the ability to submit the change yourself and you don't have a great way of knowing that it's really actually ready. Double check that all the comments are resolved and cross your fingers that the reviewer will submit it soon. Eventually, if you sit on that page long enough, you'll see that the change was merged. That was a bit of a long road, but congrats and thank you for the contribution. It seems like there could be an easier way, right? In July, we announced that we on Jetpack are beginning a project to meet developers where they are, which is GitHub. I've showed you the full official process and the lighter weight process. And here's the experimental process. You can now use GitHub to make fixes and send PRs for certain Jetpack libraries. This is an early stage effort that we hope will make it easier to explore, experiment with, and contribute to the Jetpack libraries. We're starting small with contributions encouraged for paging, room, and work manager. To get started, with Jetpack development in GitHub. You'll start by forking the Android X, Android X repository as you would for any other GitHub project and clone it locally. Most of the local workflow that I've already dis discussed still applies, including the Gradle W Studio command to use compatible versions of Android Studio. While the scope of our GitHub exploration is still quite limited, 
We encourage developers to file feature requests and bugs using the Jetpack infrastructure GitHub component on our public issue tracker to let us know which parts are important to you. Instead of the aforementioned repo instructions, you can use Git to clone the repository on GitHub. It's really that simple to get all the Jetpack library code on your Mac OS or Linux machine. Please note that building on Windows is still unsupported. The team has added some simplified commands that allow you to build and test Room and Work Manager without needing to build all of Jetpack, and we call these playgrounds. The pull request and code review model is used in GitHub rather than in Garrett for contributors. Here's an example where Yeet is making a fix and requesting a review. Armis performs the review on GitHub and Rahul approves the changes. Then behind the scenes, a process called Copybara mirrors the PR into the AOSP Garrett and a bot closes the PR as it's merged into AOSP. The GitHub workflow has enabled us to show off the details of running the build. The GitHub build must succeed before the next steps are taken. In this example, you can see that build on server is being run. Once the PR is approved, it's mirrored to the AOSP Garrett where pre-submit is run and all the usual checks apply. This is the Garrett version of that PR from Yeet I showed a moment ago. As an external contributor using GitHub for room or work manager changes, you shouldn't need to actually interact with this CL at all. Once all of the checks in GitHub and Garrett have passed, your change will be merged into Android X Master Dev in AOSP and then mirrored back to Android X Master Dev in GitHub. Congratulations, you landed your first AOSP change. The process seems a little bit verbose, but it allows us to experiment with the GitHub model without disrupting internal development workflows and access to our tried and true, true testing infrastructure. Not many folks are pretty excited about this model and, and we're definitely looking for feedback from you. It's an early stage effort, so explore, experiment with, uh, and contribute to Jetpack libraries. And let us know how we can make it better. So our team can definitely do better. Uh, there's a number of things that aren't great about the contribution workflow. As you can see from the web editor and the GitHub announcements, this is something that's getting attention from our team and we're working on it. We acknowledge that there are still problems with the external contributor workflow. Since I've been giving this talk, we've slowly ticked off some of the problems and that makes me feel pretty proud. There are bugs filed internally and teams working on fixing many of these remaining issues. I hope to be able to announce some of these when some of these are complete. Since September 2018, we've had uh, quite a few external contributors, 66 um, in Android X, and that's actually up from 48 contributors uh, when I gave this talk in July. So I think that's really, really awesome. In fact, in 2020, the number of contributors has, has risen a lot. I believe in part it's because our tools have improved, um, you know, specifically with GitHub. But also, I think that contributing to AOSP during a pandemic makes a lot of sense. Some of us find ourselves with more time on our hands to tackle things that we've always wanted to try out. Some of us are in search of a distraction from the day to day. And some of us are looking to connect with a community who we can't see in person right now. I hope that for whatever reason you find yourself contributing to AOSP, uh, you find what you need. Uh, the slides contain links to some additional resources to help you contribute high quality code to AOSP. Our standards might seem high, so there may be a lot of back and forth in the code reviews, but it's important to remember that code in our libraries and platforms impact the productivity of many users and developers. Um, and that's why we keep them so high. I'm excited to welcome more contributors to our code base. I'm happy to answer questions, and I can't wait to see you in the code. Thanks. Hey, uh, thank you so much, Andrea. That was a really great talk. Um, actually, I have, uh, it's kind of funny, I have some teammates here, and they were, like, we were all so interested. 
Um, thank you so much for 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 sharing. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, we're gonna go ahead and go over to your list of questions. Do we have anything? Soon to as. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes the search function. Oh, here, I found you. Okay, we have some questions. First one. Is there anything we can do to get an Android X pull request uh, attention if it hasn't been looked at in quite a while? It's a great question. A great question. Um, um, so it may be that there's, so that there's um, a discussion that needs to be had. So you could go back into the bug that you're referencing um, and figure out, you know, have I fixed the right things? Um, am I, are they looking for something else uh, from me? There are folks such as myself um, and others in um, on Twitter uh, available through different uh, Slack channels that are looking to help you out. So um, you can add a comment on the CL, add a comment on the bug, and if that isn't working, uh, feel free to reach out to someone on the team um, through another high fidelity method, and um, we'll try to figure out if there's a resolution. All right, thank you for that. And actually, I, I do have a question from uh, one of my teammates. Uh, I'm, if I get it wrong, just let me know. Um, but he wanted to know uh, what he was really curious about was kind of like how how does the whole like how does like a whole lot of sorry what right the organization of like the Android projects. There's a whole lot of modules within. Yet we treat a lot of like those extension libraries, um, you know, as like individual releases. We were kind of speculating on it <laughs> during your talk, um, but we definitely love to hear more on that. Um, sorry, I like started so much in the beginning. <laughs> um, sorry, is the question around um, extension module extensions like? Um, mostly um, the organization of like, well, like, um, how, like, how are you able to create a release for like a sub module and stuff like that? Yeah, so all that source is in the open. It's part of our Android X plugin. Um, there's a big file that gets updated when a release is ready. And we have an internal tool where we say, um, you know, paging is ready to go in the alpha and work manager is ready to go in a beta. Um, the teams responsible for those um, tick off some flags and say, I'm ready to release. And every two weeks we go through and look for, and I say we, it's automated process, um, look for libraries that are ready to release during that time. Um, and the entire build runs and produces all the artifacts and we ship to Maven the ones that are actually ready to be released. Uh, so it's, it's a big process. Yeah, there's hundreds of modules in the build. Um, yeah, it's all there in the build source if you want to check it out. Yeah, that's great. Um, thank you for that. And uh, maybe like to like add on like with a few of you just like add on to that. Um, like how how much effort does it take to even make a release for like the entire module itself? Like, is there is it based on like a a time based cycle or just based on feature development? Um, releases are done every two weeks, and so either you're on the train or you're not, and it's up to the team um, to decide if they have something to release at that time. Um, each library has to go through a few alphas and betas to get into the stable, and there's a time requirement uh, for how long it's released uh, as an alpha or as a beta before it, it can go out into the world. So I think it's about a total of six weeks until something could actually be stable, although you'll notice that it, it takes uh, takes longer than that um, as we get contributions and um, you know feedback from developers. Um, yeah, so every every two weeks it's possible for each library to be to be released, but they're all sort of on their own cadence as uh, features are contributed. Look at all your friends in the background. <laughs> uh, this is this this continues to be a Chicago bit. This is. Um, <laughs> Uh, this is uh, kind of a fun work day for everyone. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you so much, Andrea. Let me let me see if there's a couple other questions. We're gonna like check the time super quick, see how we're doing on that. Let's see, three thirty-four. 
and okay all right so we do have a couple of minutes at this point if anyone else has any questions feel free to jot them down and uh you know we'll give it a couple seconds and if uh you know you have think of questions later on be sure to head over to the day three andrea falcone channel um yeah we'll just give it a couple minutes vamp a little bit um i really do like that palm tree in the background thank you this has been my work from home partner uh, my office mate oh um, yeah it's, it's a little tough down here in the basement by myself but <laughs> oh man, I think you're gonna have to like vouch for some higher grounds because I I think like in the beginning of pandemic I was definitely working in dark spaces and it was uh I had to work my way to the to the window rooms. <laughs> yeah, I've got uh, kids doing school from home and a partner also working from home and. Some yeah, I, no, I got the basement. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. This is actually why I have not been at my house one time this entire time. Uh, I have like baby birds, and that is all you would hear. So instead, you get to hear like the train, the coffee shops, and uh, <laughs> other interruptions. I yeah, totally get it. But I the the work that you've done is amazing. I certainly hope we get to see more of those slides uh, later on, and definitely. If you're interested in posting a link for like uh, that file you were talking about, that'd be super great. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, we're gonna go ahead and go on break. Andrea, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, it was a really great talk. Yeah, have a great day. All right, we'll be right back.